Hello and welcome back to another PC build and today Gandias have sent out their Nesso P1 and today's build is going to be a little bit different because I'm joined here by Declan from D&D Custom PC and IT Solutions. Um, so Declan you're a subscriber of the channel but you also build PCs for a living. Yeah. And Gandias had sent me this case out, I need to do a build for YouTube. Declan needs to build a PC so he can sell it and make a little bit of money and pay some bills. So I thought why not combine the two things together today. We'll build a PC and make a video of it, and then Declan, you're going to be selling the PC on your website at the end. Uh, and what I'll do is I'll put a link to Declan's website so you can check that out later on. So let's take a look at the parts that Declan's brought along for the build today. For the motherboard, we're going to be using the ASUS ROG Strix B650A Gaming Wi-Fi. For the CPU, we're going to be using AMD's Ryzen 5 with the 7600. Keeping our CPU cool, I've got a 360mm AIO from Gamtius. It's their GL360 V2. For RAM, we've got 32GB of Kingston Fury Renegade DDR5 RGB at 6000 megatransfers per second. For storage, we're going with a single Gen 4 NVMe drive from Lexer. It's their NM790 in 2TB capacity. Around the whole build, we've got a 750W fully modular power supply from Corsair. It's their RM750 in white. For the graphics card, we're going to be using ASRock's Steel Legend RX 7600 XT. And for case fans, we've got a triple pack of the Gamdias Aeolus P2 fans. So some absolutely cracking parts that we've got here. With the case being black and white, we're going to be doing one of my favourite colour themes, black and white. So let's get into it by taking a closer look at the case. So taking a look at the case, does this remind you of anything? Yes, it reminds me of the Height Y60. Yeah, no, definitely that's the one I covered on the channel as well, and you'll, you'll see more when we come onto the top and back panels. Definitely the design is very similar to the height, which isn't a bad thing because it was a really nice looking case. The main difference here is the shape. Um, on their website they describe this as a trapezoid type shape, so there is a slightly different shape to the height, but a lot of the panels and the recessed bits at the top and the bottom, as you'll see, are very similar to that. So we've got doors on the side and the front. So there's a button. Do you want to go ahead and give that a press and open the door up, Declan? And there's a wee tab here, so it just needs a bit of a pull. And then you're able to open the door up. Now this door also, once you've got the, the side panel open, it just pulls out as well. Um, and both these doors are removable. But what we're actually going to do is we're going to leave them on for the moment because this case has one other standout feature that we want to show you first of all with the side panel and front panel on. So we'll take a look at the bottom of the case, you'll now see what I was talking about, the height case is a very similar panel design. And the reason we're starting here is it is actually possible to move the feet from the bottom to the right side panel, changing the orientation of the case. So we'll show you that first of all, we're not going to build with the case in this orientation, but you may like it. So in the case accessory box we get these little covers for where the rubber pads had been. And they're just going to attach in magnetically. And then on our case's right side panel, you see we've got little rubber pads here. So we'll go ahead and remove those. And then we can put the feet back into place. And then we can put the little rubber pads back on. So we should then be able to turn the PC around. And then that's the orientation that's going to be sitting on, on your desk. Motherboard's going to go up here. You're going to have fans here. And there's potential still for fans here and here. So it's going to give you a completely different look to your build. Um, we're not going to be doing that today, we're just going to go with a standard orientation, so we'll put the case back into that position. What do you think of it like that? <laughs> it's good. It you like, like it, print. do you? It looks like a printer. <laughs> so remove our other side panel, we've got a non-captive thumb screw at the back, it needs removed. We can then tilt the panel out and lift up and away. And if we take a look at the other side of this panel, you can see we've got a full length uh, magnetically attached dust filter on it. So it probably does make sense to remove these doors so we don't get them damaged when we're moving the case around. So it does just show in the manual that you should be able just to lift these panels up. Now I have been trying this one for a while. We did try a little bit off camera at the start and we just haven't been able to get this front door off. And I would worry a little bit about leaving it on um, because we are going to be working away at the side and I would worry it would swing open at some point and get damaged. So there does look to be screws at the back holding the hinges on so we're probably just going to remove it that way. So our top panel just simply pops off from the back, so I think there's a little notch there, Declan, you want to get your hand into it and just pop her off. And then if we take a look at the back of the panel, you can see the dust filter is built into the panel. So we take a look up top, you can see we've got this recessed area where your top fans or radiator is going to fit into. Um, you see there's this cutout here for the tubes for the radiator. And up top, I think it's two 140 or three 120 millimeter fans are up to a 360 millimeter radiator. 
Um, you can see this bracket is held on with six screws, so we'll go ahead and get them removed. And then with those screws removed, we can simply lift this bracket away. We've got a similar sort of panel on the bottom of the case and it just simply pops off again. I think Declan is your side. There's a wee notch at the back you can get into and pull the bottom panel off. Again, I would take a look at the back of this panel, very similar to the top um, dust filter built into the panel. So you can see down at the bottom of the case, again, like at the top, your fans are going to be recessed into the bottom. Um, and at the bottom, it's similar fan mounting as we've got at the top, three 120 or two 140 millimeter fans but obviously there's no radiator support down at the bottom. And you can see we've got a cutout here for your cables to pass through to the back of the case. In terms of mounting the fans at the bottom, you can see we've got some screw holes here. And the idea is you're gonna set your fans in and then use long radiator screws to screw the fans into the bottom of the case. And well done to GAM DS, they include the radiator screws with it. There's 12 of them, allowing you to mount up to three 120 millimeter fans at the bottom. In terms of our front I.O., we've got a power button, two USB Type-A ports, a single Type-C port, and a combined headphone and microphone jack. So in terms of what you can put on the side, you can see at the moment we've got three SSD brackets, and each of these brackets you're going to be able to mount a two and a half inch drive. If you take these off, You're going to be able to mount fans or radiators on the side and in terms of fans it's up to 3 120 or 3 140 millimeter fans or if you want to go with a radiator you can actually fit a 420 millimeter radiator you can see the cutout for the radiator extends down below the bottom of the case and you've got a really thick um, compatibility here for radiators up to 80 millimeters in thickness and then at the rear of the case it's up to 120 or 140 millimeter fan or 120 millimeter radiator in terms of motherboard support, it's up to AITX motherboards. And if you want to go with a CPR cutter, the maximum height supported is 193 millimeters. At the rear of the case, we've got eight horizontal PCI expansion slot brackets. And in terms of graphics card support, the maximum length supported is 426 millimeters. If you want to mount your graphics card vertically, it is possible to rotate this bracket round. So to remove this bracket, we're just going to have to remove the five screws. Brackets then going to be free. We're going to be able to turn it around 90 degrees and then put the screws back into place. So you can see here, this is gonna give you a choice of slot for mounting your graphics card in. So you shouldn't have any problems with your graphics card being up against the tempered glass panel. And I would take a look down the bottom of the case. You can see we've got some screw holes here. These are for these standoffs. There's two of those in the case accessory box. You're gonna screw them in and then you can mount your riser cable here. Now it is important to mention that the riser cable doesn't come with the case. So you don't have to pick that up at additional cost. If you are planning on mounting your graphics card horizontally, it is going to be well supported because they include a GPU support bracket. So there is a little adjustments on the back. You just need to loosen here and then you'll be able to slide these brackets up and down. And then it's just a matter of slotting it into place. If you're wondering about how that's going to stick to the bottom of the case, in the case of the box, you get these little magnetic pads. There's two of them included. So you're going to fix these to the bottom of this bracket. There's adhesive on one side, and then these are going to stick to the bottom of the case, helping keep your GP support bracket in place. So moving around to our case's second compartment, it's great to see we've got Velcro cable straps down this central cable raceway. It should make cable management very straightforward. And we've also got plenty of other cable tie down points. In terms of rubber grommets, we've got two rubber grommets over these two main cutouts to the right hand side of the motherboard, and none over any of the other additional cutouts. Um, cable routing space looks to be really good at 90 millimeters. So if you are planning on putting fans or radiators on the side like we are, you still are going to have drive mounting slots up at the top of the case here, and we've got two dedicated drive trays. They're each held on with a thumb screw at the back. So once we've loosened up the thumb screw, the drive tray is removable from the back of the case. And on each of these drive trays, you're going to be able to mount either a three and a half inch or two and a half inch drive. Just below our hard drive cage, we've got this little plate here, which can DSA is a controller plate. And if you've got a controller for your fans or AIO, you can mount it on this plate. So your power supply is going to go down at the bottom and the case is compatible with full-sized ATX power supplies up to a maximum length of 180 millimeters. Okay, we're ready to start building and we're going to be installing our CPU, the bracket for a CPU cutter, our M.2 and our RAM before we put the motherboard in the case. We'll go ahead and get the socket open. So there's a little lever on the side that we're gonna push down and out and bring it all the way to the middle of the motherboard. And then we're gonna be able to open the socket cover up from the bottom. We're gonna take care with our CPU. We'll be holding it by the sides and then we're gonna lower it down into the socket. You'll notice there's a little notch on the bottom on the top of the CPU. 
and that's going to make sure it only fits into the socket the right way. And then we can go ahead and close your socket cover down. And then we close the lever again. Um, don't get alarmed as this black bit of plastic will pop off. Sometimes more impressively than others. And then the best place to put this is in the motherboard box so we don't lose it because if we ever take our CP out of the socket, say you want to um, change your motherboard out, you're going to need that cover to protect the pins in the socket. Okay, so next up is our M.2 SSD. So we're going to be installed in the top slot, so we just need to remove the heatsink. It's held on with two screws. Okay, so we can then set our M.2 SSD into the slot. And then if we flatten it down, we've got a little clip at the back, which we can close, and that's then going to hold our drive in place. So just before we put our heatsink back into place, we're going to need to remove the plastic protection, and then we're going to be able to return the heatsink. So we're now ready to install our RAM, so we're going to open the clips on the second and fourth slot along from the CPU. Okay, and then we can lower our RAM down, and then once we're happy everything's lined up, it's just a bit of firm pressure. And it's exactly the same thing then with our second stick. Okay, so we're now ready to install the brackets for our CPU killer. So to do that, we're going to have to remove the stock MD clips, so each held on with two screws. So then we've got one of these standoffs to go on each end, and if you look at the standoffs, they come in a bag labelled AMD, and there's a thick end and a thin end. It's the thick end that you want to screw into the motherboard. So then we can set the motherboard into the case, line it up with the standoffs at the back, and then we're going to screw the motherboard into place using nine of the screws with a little lip around the outside from the case accessory box. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is get our case cables plugged in. Starting off with a HD audio cable, that's going to go into this header down the bottom left-hand side of the motherboard. Yeah, so in terms of front panel connectors, we've only got a power switch, so we're going to plug it in to the second and third pin in the top row from the left-hand side. So then we've got our USB 3.0 header here, so we'll bring the cable through the cutout, line it up with the header, and push into place. And then just above that, we've got, we've got our front panel Type-C header. So next thing to do is get our power supply installed, and we've plugged in the cables that we're going to need. So we've plugged in our 24-pin cable, two 8-pin EPS cables to add additional power to our CPU, we plugged in a PCIe cable and also a SATA cable. The reason we plugged the SATA cable in, we're not installing SATA drives, but our RGB hub that we're going to use is going to need SATA power. We can then set our power supply into the case, making sure the fan is facing outwards. Um, and then we can secure the power supply at the back before the power supply screws from the case accessory box. Next thing to do is get all our cables plugged in. So we've got two EPS headers at the top left of the motherboard. There's an 8-pin and a 4-pin. And then we can push the excess cable through to the back. And uh, Next we can plug in our 24-pin cable. And we'll pull all the excess cable through to the back. So taking a look at our AIO, a new trend with AIOs is actually having them installed with the fans on the radiator. And it's great to see, it makes a bit less work for us. So we're just going to put this onto our fan bracket. So with this bracket at the top of the case, you've got a choice. You can actually have your radiator recessed into the bracket and then your fan sitting down underneath. We have sized things up in the case and we actually think it's going to look much better. Fill the top of the case with both the radiator and fan sitting down at the bottom. Um, again, if our fans weren't already installed in the I.O., we might have decided differently. But overall, I think this is going to look much better. Okay, so what we can do is set our top fan stroke radiator bracket onto our I.O. And then we're going to secure it into place with the short radiator screws. Probably takes you longer editing than it does building. Uh, it's does normally it? a day to build and two days to edit. Whoa. And then even the descriptions on YouTube, it takes a it takes a lifetime getting your thumbnails. There's there's a lot of work goes on behind the scenes of it. This is the easy bit. <laughs> But like, you know, this PC I could have built in half an hour, you know, if it wasn't recording it. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Um, so bring that up, we'll get the pump set next. Next thing to do is put the brackets on our pump. So because we're installing an AMD motherboard, we're going to use the one labelled AMD. It's just a matter of slotting one in from the bottom, and then there's one to go in at the top as well. Um, and then we just need to secure them in with four screws. So I'm just going to lower our CPU cooler down into place. And uh, this would have been the way that we would like to have installed it with the tubes at this side. So the only problem with this, because we've got an AMD motherboard, we're going to have to either install this cooler either this way or this way and not sideways. And when you look here, tubes this way would have been absolutely perfect. If we twist around this way, it doesn't reach. And if we install it this way, the tubes just look really ugly. And there's no way to get that bend out of it. Um, so that's the problem. With an Intel motherboard, you'd no bother. You'd be able to install them this way and the tubes would look nice and tidy. 
So what we're going to do is install the other way round. So you can see in this position the tubes are going to look nice and tidy. The only problem is it's going to mean we're not going to be able to install a rear fan. But I think tidy looking tubes is probably better than a rear fan. Okay, so change of plan, we're actually going to try and install it on the bracket the way it's designed. It did actually just look a little bit too bulky at the top. So we're taking the fans off the radiator, we're going to set our bracket into place and then we can return the fans onto the radiator and these fans are already daisy chained together. Then all we need to do is take one of the screws, there we are. Just before we lower this down, we're just going to pass the cable through to the back. Okay, and then we can secure the bracket and replace it at the top. Okay, and at this stage then we can replace our top panel. So I think this definitely is the better option. We've got a bit more space at the top. The fans are no longer putting pressure on these cables. And I think you can see enough of them to make it look good. So then we can add some thermal paste to the center of the CPU. Okay, so before we install our cooler, we need to remove the plastic. So what I like to do to help organize all the cables coming from the AIO is actually wrap them around the bracket. And it just means rooting them up towards the top is gonna to be a little bit easier. You just wanna make sure they're not catching on the cold plate where they're not. So we can then just set this back onto the bracket we already installed on the motherboard. And then we just need to get a thumb screw onto each corner. And then it's just a matter of tightening each corner up and turn. So if you do have it in a different orientation, the logo is rotatable. It just rotates round to whatever orientation you need to have it in. So we've got this interesting button coming from our AIO. We're going to be able to press it and it's going to let us cycle through the ARGB effects on the pump. We've also got an ARGB cable, so hopefully we're going to be able to control it with this. I'm probably not going to use this button, but what we'll do is we'll pass it through the back of the case. So we've got two CPU headers up here. The bottom one is our CPU fan header and the top one is our AIO pump header. So we'll pass you the top cable coming through from our fans and we'll get it plugged into the header. Um, and just above it we've got our AIO header, so the three pin cable coming from the pump will get plugged into it. And then we're just going to route the cables up towards the back of the case and pass them through at the back. Um, we've got an ARGB header up here at the top, so we want to get that ARGB cable plugged into that header there. And then the excess cable will just bring out the top. There'll be a wee tie. There's a wee tie at the back. We can tidy it up later and that'll keep it nice and tidy. Last thing to do is to get the ARGB cable coming from the fans plugged into the splitter cable that we've already plugged into the motherboard. Okay, so this brings us on to your case fans. So Gamdas have sent out these fans. They're pre-release at the moment, but hopefully by the time you're watching this, they'll be available to buy. One of the nice features about these fans is you can actually swap the blades round. So if you're going to have them set to intake on the side like we have, we would have to install them this way round if you couldn't swap the blades, and that doesn't look very good. So the blades here actually just pull out. So do you want to try pulling that one out? Um, I think it just pulls forward. Might actually be easier to push it that way. Yeah, it is definitely pushing it out the back is easier. And then we've got a reverse blade design. So it would just be a matter, I'll give you one of those. Oh, we can just line it up and push it into place. So you can see now on the side where we want to have it set to intake, we're going to have the good side of the fan on display. So the, tip, the fans are going to daisy chain together. There's a little connector here and little pins here. So it's just a matter of pushing them together. So all we need to do is line the fans up and push. And the connectors are going to click into place. Okay, so that's all three of the fans connected up. And just like the Lian Li Uni fans, if you've got a spare fan here, you're just going to be able to pull this connector off. So it's just a matter of rotating it round and pulling it out. Okay, so we're going to be able to power and control the lighting on all these fans using just one cable. So on the end with the gold pins, we're going to be able to plug one of our fan cables into it. And on the other end then, we've just got this cable which is going to plug into our hub. So this is our hub, probably easier to show you now than when we put it into the case. So in terms of connecting it up, coming out the bottom, we have got two SATA cables which are going to power the hub. We'll plug those into the SATA cables coming from our power supply. And then we've got an LED in cable. So on this we've got a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB cable. We're going to plug that into the ARGB header on our motherboard. Coming out the other end, we've got a PWM cable and we've got a standard 4-pin PWM connector. So we're going to plug that into our motherboard and that is then going to allow us to control the speed of the fans and sync it up with the motherboard. We've got a port labelled USB, so I'm going to take our USB cable 
line it up and push into place. And on the other end, we've got a standard USB 2.0 cable, and we're going to plug that into a USB 2.0 header on our motherboard, which is going to allow us to use Gamdesa software to control the hub. And then if we take a look at our fan ports, we've got four fan ports, so one, two, three, and four, and all we're going to need to do is plug the cable coming from our fans into one of those. So then we can set our group of three fans into place on the side, and just before we put them into place, we're going to pass the cable through to the back. Okay, so we've just got our fan hub to get connected up. So I'm going to plug the cable coming from the fans into port number one on our fan hub. Um, next thing to do is get the two SATA cables plugged into the SATA cable coming from our power supply. And then we've just our cables to go into the motherboard. So I'll pass them through to the front. Okay, so I'll pass the PWM cable through. And I'll get it plugged into one of the PWM headers at the bottom of the motherboard. Okay, ARGB cable coming through. And then last but not least, a USB cable. And we've got two USB 2.0 headers at the bottom of the motherboard to plug into. Okay, we're ready to install our graphics card, so we need to remove the second and third slot cover from the top. Okay, so we can then insert the graphics card into the case, line it up with the slot. One of the nice things with this motherboard is you don't actually need to open the clip on the slot. And then when we're happy, everything's lined up. It's just some firm pressure, and it'll clip into place. Okay, and then we can secure the graphics card into place with the two screws we removed earlier on. And then we can plug our PCIe cables into the graphics card. I was thinking, yeah, if that yeah. was under, that would tidy it, wouldn't it? Yeah. Or is that sitting up like that? Doesn't look nice. But one of the big reasons we picked this power supply was to get the white cable extensions and definitely the 24 pin and the EPS cables look good but just not happy with this so we're going to add in some custom white cable extensions. I think that definitely looks much cleaner. Yeah. Last thing to do is some cable management and get the panels back on again. Have you ever had a problem when you, you put it all in and then it doesn't work? Oh yeah. <laughs> but you have to be optimistic about these things. I suppose the difficulty, most of the parts I use, you know, I'm, not, I'm not doing everything from new, whereas you've got a completely new PC here. We've never tested any of these parts. And, and some people would say, actually, you should probably build with them outside the case. I learned that lesson the hard way a couple of times. Yeah. <laughs> Put everything in the case and then had to pull it all out again. It's great in, in building PCs that you learn something new every day when you're building. Oh, definitely. You're going to pick up more and more things. I mean, when you see something go wrong once, you're, you're more likely to recognize it again. So it's, the red tells you whether you're in focus or not on the camera. That's cool. The orange, so if it, if it was not an orange, it's not focused. That camera cost a fortune. Yeah, it's a good camera. Not the easiest to use. Yeah, you're happy enough to stop me do this, are you? Or? Yeah, you're the master of the cable management. I'm not, I, I, oh, watch the wee button. Oh. Something I'm known for my cable management, but. I've, I've sort of got better as time has gone on. Then yeah, does one on it too. No, you could do, yeah. Or I'll, I'll do these and then I'll, I'll add it into another one. Do you want to stick that or do you want to leave it just as sitting? Okay, nicely there, just leave it. Is it magnetic or? Yeah. What's well, magnetic? Yeah, that's sitting there nicely. <laughs> Thank you.
Okay, so that's the PC up and running. We've gone ahead and updated the BIOS, installed all the drivers, and got the RGB software up and running. If you don't know how to do any of that, I've made a separate video on it, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. But what we want to do now is take a look at the benchmarks. So take a look at our temperature. Our Ryzen 5 7600 idled at 41 degrees and reached a maximum of 70 degrees during a 10 minute idle 64 stability test. Our RX 7600 XT idled at 28 degrees and reached a maximum of 59 degrees during the stability test. In terms of noise levels, these were pretty good with an average noise level of 36 decibels at idle and 46 decibels under load. During gaming, both the CPU and GPU temperatures were generally in the 50s. During all the gaming benchmarks, we used a resolution of 1920 by 1080 and with graphics settings set to high. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, using the game's built-in benchmark, we had an average frame rate of 179. In Assassin's Creed Valhalla, again, using the game's built-in benchmark, an average frame rate of 122. Finally, in Far Cry 6, again, using the game's built-in benchmark, we had an average frame rate of 149. Taking a look at the Time Spy benchmark, we had an overall score of 11,078, with our GPU score slightly outperforming our CPU score. So the build is running lovely and cool and quiet. The Gandius fans look absolutely stunning. And we just ran them on motherboard sync, both in terms of lighting and the speed of the fans as well. Um, so in terms of building in the case, what, what did you think, Declan? Yeah, it's a lovely case to build in. The only thing I would point out would be the grommets at the bottom missing. If there was grommets in there, it would make the case more clean. Uh, overall, I like the case. Yeah, I think you can definitely see down at the bottom, um, particularly because we use white cables at the back. You can actually look down there and see the cables at the back. Um, and I think, like you say, some rubber grommets there and even some rubber grommets at the top wouldn't go amiss either, just to hide those cables in at the back. And in terms of the fans, I think the fans are absolutely stunning. These new fans from, from Gandias on the side, um, they, look, they look great. What do you think of them? Lovely. Yeah, so I don't know how much they're going to cost yet. They're not actually out yet, um, but once they do get the link for them, I'll put them into the description. But certainly they do give the Andy's Uni fans a run for their money in terms of looks and performance. Um, in terms of building for the, in the case, I don't think we ran into an awful lot of issues with anything. Really, it was just that bracket at the top, and we were deciding whether or not to put the radiator into it or put the radiator down below. I think if you do have it down below, like we originally thought, you probably are going to run into a wee bit of clearance or EPS cables were catching on it. And I think it does actually look better at the top. So you're going to be putting this um, up for sale on your website? Yeah, yeah, and you can check me out on Google, D&D uh, &D Custom PC. Uh, I want to thank Chris for allowing me to come on his channel as well. It's uh, been a pleasure and well, honour. It was, it was nice to have Declan give us a give us a hand here and he, he does he does great work so please do go on to his channel and check him out and if you fancy buying this pc um you'll be able to do that on his website so hopefully you have enjoyed this full step-by-step -step pc build guide if you have please remember to give it a thumbs up and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel please hit the subscribe button as well thanks for watching